Hi there, I'm Dr. Charlie Liu and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about chronic insomnia and how to manage it. So this is going to be a two-part video. The first part is going to be talking about sleep hygiene and the second part is going to be talking about sleep restriction therapy. So insomnia unfortunately is a problem that a lot of us have been experiencing during the pandemic and lockdown and the various stresses that have been going on. Um, and uh, chronic insomnia is something that a lot of people have been coming in with. So I thought I'd do this video uh, and give you some of the tips that I often tell to my patients. So chronic insomnia is a slightly different animal to acute insomnia. Acute insomnia or short-term insomnia is something that most of us have experienced and that usually comes on after a period of stress or worry or perhaps a change of environment and it's typically self-resolving. People will suffer for a week or two and then get back into their normal rhythm. Occasionally we need to give a course of some sleeping tablets to solve that. Chronic insomnia on the other hand uh, by the time people have come to the GP, more often than not, uh, it's something that has been going on for months or even years, um, and it's just night after night of not being able to get to sleep. This can be really distressing, and people are uh, you know, sometimes on the verge of tears by the time they're calling in, because it is just night after night of feeling exhausted, uh, and people often feel like they're living a slightly odd double life, where during the day they're going about their normal business, but at night time, everyone else is asleep, and they're just awake for 80% of the night, tossing and turning. Uh, and this can sometimes lead to people starting to get a bit stressed and anxious about the idea of sleep. So they, you know, in the run-up to the evening, when they know that bedtime is coming closer and closer, they start to get a little bit tense and a bit anxious because they know that they're going to have a bad night's sleep. Uh, and uh, this can often be very bad for the insomnia itself. So hopefully these two videos are going to give you some tips on how to break out of this cycle and get back into a normal healthy rhythm of some sleep. This first part of the video, like I mentioned, is going to be about sleep hygiene tips. Uh, this is the umbrella term for all the various habits and uh, tips just for uh, making sure that you have a good healthy sleep routine. Uh, this is probably all stuff that uh, you've tried before if you've been suffering from insomnia for a long time. Um, so if you feel like you, you already know all this stuff and you're already doing all this stuff, do skip ahead to the second video, um, but I'm going to go through it anyway for the people who don't know. So the start of a, a good sleep hygiene habit is to have a good routine. Make sure that you're going uh, to bed at roughly the same time every day and waking up at roughly the same time every day. If you don't do this, the natural 24-hour circadian rhythm of your body is going to be a little bit disrupted. It's going to be like moving to a different time zone every day. So ideally, you want to be going to bed within about the same hour every single day. And in the hour before you go to bed, uh, you want to have a, a relatively similar routine every single day. So roughly an hour before you go to bed, start shutting down the lights. If you've got a bright overhead light, turn that off and turn on a lamp instead so the room is nice and dim. If you've got any screens that you're using, your mobile phone, uh, your laptop, your TV, perhaps consider switching that off uh, or at least turning down the brightness or putting in a blue light filter. Ideally, just turning it off altogether uh, and instead you know, listen to some music, read a book, perhaps do some meditation or a bit of gentle stretching um, and have that as your, your nighttime routine instead. Earlier in the day, uh, you want to be stopping your caffeine intake and your alcohol intake at a relatively early point. Uh, so caffeine uh, is metabolized at different speeds by different people and that's largely determined by your genetics. So some people might have a cup of coffee in the morning uh, and it will have gone out of their system within a couple of hours. For other unlucky people, um, they might have a cup of coffee earlier in the day and by night time it's still kind of floating around their system and affecting their sleep. So it may be that you're one of these people who are uh, suffering from that. Um, and if you take alcohol, um, just be aware that the alcohol probably stays in your system for a bit longer than you think. A lot of people know the, um, the rough rule that one unit is processed by the body in approximately one hour. And whilst that is true, the alcohol is broken down into other chemicals. So the alcohol is primarily broken down into aldehydes and then on into other chemicals. And unfortunately, some of those chemicals are also psycho psychoactive. They're also stimulants that will affect your sleep and keep you awake. Uh, so even though if you have a glass of wine at 8 o'clock and then you go to bed at 10 o'clock, by that time, um, you know, the two units in that glass of wine might have been metabolized, but unfortunately they've been metabolized into other chemicals and those other chemicals are the ones that are going to keep you awake. So it's best to stop drinking um, a little bit earlier or to avoid alcohol if you're having problems with recurrent insomnia. Earlier in the day, in the morning, is when you want to get your exercise. 
Uh, ideally, you don't want to do very heavy, intense exercise late at night um, because that will boost your adrenaline levels and your adrenaline levels are likely to keep you awake. You can do relatively low level exercise. If you want to do something like some yoga, some stretching, some Pilates, something that isn't going to get your heart rate too high, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful and I'm going to put the link in the description below uh, to the other video which is talking about sleep restriction therapy and that is the uh, type of therapy that we go uh, on from here. If you've tried all the stuff that I've talked about before um, then do have a look at the second video and hopefully that will give you some helpful tips.